All right, all right, all right, everyone. We're going to be starting soon. Okay. We'll wait for a few more folks to file in. All right. Hello, hello, everyone. Feeling jazz, caffeinated, hydrated? Yeah? All right, awesome. Well, hello, and thank you for joining us for Coalesce 2022. I am Erica Louie. I am the head of data at DBT Labs, and I will be the MC of this incredible session. Um, the title of the session is Unlocking Analytics Engineering at Scale, joined by Mong Dang, who is the Director of Analytics Engineering at Aritzia. <laughs> Give a big round of applause, yeah. And I got some housekeeping in order. So all chat conversations and Q&A will, will take place in hashtag coalesce unlocking analytics engineering channel of DBT Slack. This allows us the chance to connect with the remote employees. So all Q&A will be there. And then Monk's going to be answering all of those questions in DBT Slack in that channel. If you are not part of the DBT community in Slack, then you are missing out. But it's not too late to join. So you can go to community.getdbt.com right now and search for hashtag coalesce unlocking analytics engineering when you enter the space. Um, New Orleans attendees, just to let you know, we are 30 seconds ahead of the remote folks. Um, so do not do any spoilers in the chat if you can. Don't get too excited. Um, okay, so then let's just get this started. Over to you, Monk. One, two, okay, there we go. Ooh, a little vibrator. <laughs> All right, now that's done. <laughs> How's everyone doing today? Good? Start of DBT. I see a few yawns, it's okay. A little bit more drinking later on, I'm sure it'll wake you up at seven to nine and 10 p.m. <laughs> well, it's a pleasure to be here with you today. Um, I really appreciate it. You know, the audience and, and the, the, the liveliness on the chat would love to have a chance to chat with everyone who has questions and comments. Feel free to drop it in. So my name is Mong Dan. Yeah, I'm the Analytics Engineering Director at Aritzia. I also serve in the board of Sheet Geek, a nonprofit organization that really retains, engages, and supports women in technology. So I'm here today to share our journey of unlocking analytics engineering at scale in Aritzia specifically, in the hopes that it's helpful in our collective innovation in analytics engineering ecosystem. Hopefully you knew that already and that's why you came to this talk. <laughs> so how many companies have over a billion dollars in annual net revenue in the audience? I see a hand, awesome, two, three. Ah, okay, awesome. <laughs> I have some implants here, by the way. How many companies are from Canada? How many Canucks in the room? Yes, awesome. Well, how many are retail? All right, good to see. So how many with more than 10 analytics engineers in their company today? Yeah, I got two. Okay, three, four. Okay, that's good. Well, thanks for participating. Just want to get a sense of, of the room and the audience. You know, Aritzia is a vertically integrated design house. So we design apparel and accessories and sell our own collections. So more than 90% of the products sold are designed in-house. Therefore, the data, the bulk of that data is actually in our full supply chain, which 
I think is pretty awesome. So how are we different from other data-oriented companies? We are well-established, non-digital based, medium-sized, vertically integrated organization that sells everyday luxury clothes. And with our four strategic growth drivers, such as e-commerce and omni-channel innovation, geographic expansion, product innovation and expansion, brand awareness and customer expansion, the breadth and the depth of that data is progressively increasing for our analytics engineers to model and transform. So for all the data lovers in the audience, as well as online, it is myself included, I'm such a data lover, and I've been doing it for a little while. Um, it's such fun to design models using that data that is end-to-end -end from designing, manufacturing over to selling, and seeing its full journey up to the customer itself. We have more than 16 label brands that speak to different moments in life. Here it is actually in the flesh. <laughs> so I'm wearing Babaton pants and top, and I have actually, as an analytics engineer, saw this outfit, outfit's full journey through data in our own data warehouse. We are growing our boutique network across North America with 110 retail stores and serving clients in 200 plus countries through the e-commerce site, aritzia.com. So this, do people see their city on this map? I hope so. If not, we're coming soon. So our vision in Aritzia is to deliver everyday luxury through engaging service, beautiful products, aspirational environments, and captivating communications. This is really embedded in everything we do in Aritzia, including analytics engineering. So in addition to modeling data for users, we deliver everyday luxury by providing high quality data, how to use guides, detailed business descriptions on tables and fields, automated monitoring across that pipeline, and white glove communications service to really maximize the use of that data. So to enable and sustain that vision, we saw the need to scale up. So how did we come from a handful of BI general developers to scaling up to a 14-person analytics engineering team today and still growing? I'll start with the problems. We had to engage the business in a data transformation in an enterprise-wide way and incrementally provide value and learnings without overwhelming the existing team. Going into what were the approaches we took for that solution, flowing into why did we use these solutions, what were the short and long-term impacts of our growing team and to our internal and external stakeholders. And then ending with providing a little sneak peek of what were the lessons learned through our journey? What pain points can others watch out for? And I saw a few folks that are closer in terms of our size in Aritzia. And where we see gaps in our current analytics engineering landscape today. Okay. So where were we before we scaled up? Who here has been asked to create a model that was required yesterday and data sources were not integrated yet into your tool. Ah, I see the majority. <laughs> yeah, so you found those data sources, you ingested that data, put that into a tool that you can actually model it, created a visualization, trained other users, then continued to maintain that actual output until maybe it'll be retired at some point. Well, our general BI developers were pulled into different, different directions, and they had to wear many hats. You know, this is then aggregate, aggravated by the small team that we had, wherein we had to cater to multiple departments with a company that is more than 500,000 employees today. Now, how many have experienced being informed that in your backlog, those 10 user stories are all urgent. All of them needs to be done, all at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so 
the process of prioritization at that time was by time rather than quality. So getting anything out immediately, even when it's substandard and could be more costly in the long run, was more important than quality. So this left a small team really focused on building without having a chance to build upon standards, which only increase the problems over time. Who is currently using data technology that hasn't been significantly improved in the last year? Ooh, okay. That's good to hear. Because in analytics world, we know our, our technology space grows really quickly. So our technology stack at that time was really aging. And it was limited to the on-prem physical infrastructure that we had. So this also caused the team to manually monitor and run and many monitor the production runs to its completion. So imagine this, thinking of staring at a, at a screen for about two to three hours, just to make sure that it's completed successfully. If it's not, you have to wait another two to three hours to complete that. From the data aspect, there were custom views for every user request, and the use of many different ingest patterns, which caused highly repetitive tables. So if a change is required by a user request, let's say for just one particular field, you just need to change the logic. What happens is that there are many redundant work necessary to complete that, because every single model, multiple repetitive tables had to be opened up and changed. Right? We don't follow the dry principle anymore. So this negatively impacted our delivery time to users, and decrease the trust in the team. And so to help address these problems, here are some of the key changes we made to support the scale up. First, we moved from a project to a product delivery approach. Right? This was for both build and run modes. And I would love to hear folks that actually went through this journey as well in their organizations. So projects are finite. They have defined start and end date, and essentially are one and done. And then the team moves on to other projects. A product delivery approach is linked to the product, the natural product life cycle. Essentially, so you're never done until the product reaches its natural end of life. As analytics engineers, our products are the data assets that are ready for analysis, for visualization, and for key decisions. So the product team builds, runs, enhances, and actually retires these data assets throughout. So in addition to our product approach, it also fosters a close alignment between the business, the business areas, the business departments, and the analytics engineers themselves. Second, we moved to specialize our analytics engineers. We've heard a lot of terms during the keynote and other talks, data engineers thrown there, analytics there, analytics engineers, there's some data analysts, right? There's some visualization. For us, we focused analytics engineers to data vision, the data model design, the transformation layers. We split out the platform work, the ingestion, as well as the visualization. This allows our analytics engineers for deep data modeling activity. So in addition to that, our data engineers are actually dedicated to a data domain. This allows more in-depth business knowledge and in turn data models that can address broader and deeper questions. Okay. We provided more autonomy for our engineers by setting up them to have a repository tied to respective data domains compared to other companies that have typically one full, one repo for all domains. Okay. Third, to support the now specialized analytics engineers, the third key change we prioritized, we did, was actually the advancement of use of software engineering practices in our modeling in every way we work. So, this includes things like data code versioning, using GitHub, having different environments for development, testing, and production, 
having functions for every repeated code, and automating as much as possible where possible. Fourth, now that we have these practices in the top three, to support these practices to continually improve, we set up a community. So quoting Stephen Covey, the community is important to sharpen the saw. We need to take some time and invest in our practices as analytics engineers. So who is better to e equipped to actually improve on those standards and patterns and guiding principles that would help the analytics engineers but the practitioners themselves? And you need to make time for that. Last but not least, we share the load of data validation, performance testing, support, user alignment with the product team. From the first bullet I talked about. Why? You know, this sharing makes space for those, three, those four items, four actions above to actually happen. If not, it will never happen. So through these steps, we were able to scale analytics engineering and have the following wins. We had an increased focus on skills development and designing models and different transformations and efficient transformations. A team member does not have to wear four to eight different hats all at the same time to produce high quality outputs. The team spends much less time in firefighting mode wherein known issues come up that need to be immediately fixed by manual steps. There are also now ways to remove those manual steps, thus increasing time for building and enhancing those models. The prioritization process is now focused on quality instead of time, allowing for better visibility on the use of data, those data products. So we leverage that transparency to improve standards, code review process that really increase data usability, reliability, and scalability. From a tech perspective, our infrastructure is now more scalable with the use of cloud. For example, we can easily increase and decrease compute and storage as needed when we're in a sales event or not in a sales event, it changes. We have also improved automated monitoring and alerting because of modern tools and shared tools with the product team. And from a data perspective, we now have data marts that can be leveraged by multiple different departments, different areas, varied analysis, and dashboards. So the improved code quality and consistency increase the user's confidence in the information they received. And here are the lessons we took away from our journey. We're still in this journey, still growing, as I said. Naming conventions style guides, code libraries were key part of our journey. Think about that early, early in the journey. This lessened the amount of refactoring that you needed to do, really increased the ease of learning of the existing code that was done by analytics engineers in the previous team. This also allowed the incoming analytics engineers to ramp up faster. It's a faster turnaround for them to deliver and makes them more excited because they can deliver rather than actually just trying to understand the business and understanding the team. So scaling the team, note that increases the pain of gaps when you have missing documentation and standards and guiding principles. The previous ease of meeting one-on-one -on -one with you know, the team members that have been there for a while really goes from one to 10. And what happens is that they get bogged down by meetings and training people up instead of actually delivering and being the leads of that team. With that said, I caveat with the second part, you don't need to define everything on day one. No one wants to define standards all in the first year that they're in. It is a balance, a right balance, between what is the number of starting standards that you require to be able to build everyday luxury quality data. 
then having the mechanisms to add and improve on that. So making sure that that's part of your process in the, in the organization. Another lesson was that the analytics engineering ecosystem is fairly immature. We need to land on a collective vision that would support the quality of the data outputs and productivity of our teams. This ties to wanting to see more educational programs specifically for analytics engineering. It was and is difficult to find experienced people who are passionate about modeling and analytics engineering specifically. There are many data related programs and I know a few of you have seen a lot of them or tried some of them, but most are focused on the latter end of that data pipeline. And this is truly unfortunate because the earlier stage of that pipeline where the analytics engineers build those models is exponential in terms of value for the organization itself. Hence, I'm actually very ecstatic to be here with you to see the growth of our space and to be in a conference for data, for data people made by data people. So that's analytics engineering scaling up at a vertically integrated design house and we continue to hire. Feel free to post your questions, comments, feedback, thoughts on the Slack channel. I'll be responding through chat. Thank you. Wow, thank you, Mong, for such an incredible presentation. Um, and thank you, everyone, for joining us in person and online. Um, if you would like to submit some questions uh, or comments to our speakers, please do so in the coalesce, the, oh, hashtag coalesce unlocking analytics engineering at scale um, channel and DBT community Slack. Uh, please remember that the speaker will need some time to get settled before answering all of your questions. <laughs> yeah. It is lunchtime, we're all a little hungry. Um, but next yeah. up is going to be at 2.30 p.m. Central Time, the easy way to launch analytics at a startup with DBT with Lindsay Murphy and John Kennedy. So thank you, everyone. Thank you.